campfire with hickory, hickory ash rope. Don't use no green or rotten wood, they'll get you by the smoke. You just lay there by the juniper, while the moon is right, watching those jugs fill them. I'd say uh, back in the Depression, when I started making liquor, I was about 12 years old. I made whiskey with old man, he's dead now, George Crabtree. Lived up here at what to call, well, it's close to Shady Grove, a place they call Shady Grove. And then, uh, after I learned, I got out and started making myself. Uh, back then, there wasn't any jobs, about like it is now. I dropped out of school and started making liquor, buying clothes, shoes. Back then, people was working for 40 cents a day. I figured I could make whiskey make a little more than that. <laughs> Which I did. Of course, I got caught a few times, too. You know, when the people got settled, thick settled around, while they was making it up over hollering nearly. They'd make their corn, have it ground up in their wheat, you know, they had to have the wheat to go with it. And they'd grind it up, and they'd use whatever they needed in their homes. And sell some, you know, and then make liquor out of the rest. So many years that we worked with things that was no money, you know, and you had to work with what you could make money at and get by with, and that's what we do. And I couldn't, I couldn't imagine how many gallons and gallons and gallons on top of gallons. Yeah. When I went to school, I'd go into until the time was up to let the children out, and then I'd go home and I'd go and work uh, all around the place, you know, and help fix everything that it took to use while they were making the liquor, like if you were doing this. <laughs> yeah, and we'd get everything lined up and take the hogs and feed them right at the still place. Feed them in a big trough. Oh, Lordy, so many times. And they had to spout malt corn that they raised in the fields and make their malt. And then they'd take a gallon or two of flour to mix in with that malt, you know. And that's when they made their, that's when they'd put up their run of liquor in their big tubs, you know. You couldn't use just anything, you have to have copper. Anymore they have what they call a pumping keg, and it has a, a worm in it to, to put the, let the whiskey and all run through that, you know, in cold water, so it's when it comes out and it'll come out fine. And when it'd get ready to start to a boil, they'd start up good with, they also had a brake stick, they called it that they'd stir it all up good with, and, and they'd put the cap on it, and then they'd put the fire up just a little more under it to start it to boil, you know. And in a few minutes, you could hear it come in, something, you could hear it come, oh, here out there at that house. It's like the mule kicking. <laughs> For a few minutes, and they'd quit that thumping, you know, as the air in their vessels. And when it quit that thumping, then first thing you know, here it come the signal out of the little, out of the little worm. Well, this is a typical, um still over here you have the still pot and this is what we call the cooler barrel the cooler barrel contains the uh, copper wor worm or copper condensing coil it's more commonly called a worm in the bottom of the moonshiners how long did you have to wait to, uh, to catch a steel like that well it's uh, sometimes you might catch a steel on the uh, first trip in and other times it requires, you know, requires several trips uh, to catch one. It, it just depends on the uh, circumstances. Um, some people couldn't find employment and, uh, you know, they, they did this just to, as a source of income. Uh, of course, you have a lot of welfare programs and, uh, and sometimes this affects the uh, uh, production of whiskey. The federal tax on moonshine is $10.50 per gallon. So the majority of the price of whiskey is 
is taxes. Major reason for uh, uh, making it a federal law. In fact, the United States government's being defrauded, and uh, that's why the laws were enacted to, uh, you know, to stop this. You can't make any. You can't produce any whiskey at all for your own use. You ain't a, a criminal to make whiskey. You invest in your money in it, and it's work. You know, Steve. I don't see why they don't legalize it. Because when a man, he buys his sugar, he buys your grain, you buy your equipment that you use, and you're not stealing nothing. They should legalize it. Your information comes naturally from informers. That's the most common source. Uh, uh, well, of course, anyone that gives you information, you could be considered an informer. We get information, though, from uh, state and local officers. Uh, they receive information from their sources of information. Uh, we sometimes get letters in the mail. Uh, normally, they're unsigned. We get uh, telephone calls occasionally. I'm sure that a lot of our information comes from um, competitors, people who are engaged in the same business and are trying to eliminate some competition. Uh, that, that's common source of information. Of course, we use undercover uh, operations sometimes to purchase evidence, too. We'll, you know, send agents to, uh, to buy whiskey from these people. Sometimes we'll spend two or three days in the mountains. It, if we find a, a large steel, uh, we'll often, you know, uh, stay there till someone comes. Of course, here again, I'm getting into Department policy and things I maybe shouldn't mention. Well, it's pretty shrewd they operate. They uh, they pick up all their information from other people, like wholesale, grocery mail, warehouse where you buy your fruit jars, and then they get them search warrant. They come search and anything that they find that could be used in the steel. They charge you with it. And they take you in, you feel bound to court. Have your trial in federal court. You ever get in gun battles with them? Oh, well, well they had me charged with it, yeah. <laughs> they charged me down here in Carter County with that, but uh, I beat him up. But they have been quite a few of them. Now you, you have more trouble with the state and the county than you do the federal. The federal, they don't come in unless they know exactly where it's at. Then they come in and every whose property it's on, and they charge them with having it in their procession. And then they search all cars. If they find one with a fruit jar in it, they confiscate the car. And I think they auction these cars off, and then the money that they get out of anything that's confiscated, they turn it over to their retirement fund. When they retire, then that makes their pocket a little heavier. How long have they sent you up for then? Oh, the first time I got 90 days. Second time I got 90 days. And then the third time I got two years. Fourth time I got five years. Did you have to serve all of them? Yeah, I served it all. We have a lot of uh, a lot of people that we have caught who are repeaters will catch them and they'll go be sent off to prison and come back and a lot of them will engage back in the same business because you know they that's all they've done all their life and uh, uh, it's just uh, something that they know best and they would rather make moonshine than than say engage in a legitimate oc occupation of course some of them they have very little education and they they can't get jobs. I'd rather 
make uh, whiskey and uh, then to get on welfare. Uh, I believe you're earning it. I'll put it that way. Well, there's always a fear of him and getting caught and having a shootout with the law or something like that and being killed. Mm -hmm. and if he's caught, he'd have a shootout and kill somebody. Well, he'd send his blood. He had to do that to make a living when he was younger, buy his clothes and send his blood and he'll never leave him. You ask me how I cope with it when he comes in drinking. I don't want to feed you just keep your mouth shut and chew your back and spit in the fire and just act like he's not there. When you talk back, you probably get knocked over the head or something so you don't say anything. There was a time when I lived with trouble But those days like my youth have gone by It's too old to care about the danger And he knows he just might as well die The laws I broke, they were made by rich men
Ja. Was halt für Big Spear? Ja, meist, äh, 40 Bags of Sugar. 100 Pound Bags. But there's a lot of work to it. You set your mash first. And we say like a small outfit, uh, uh, we say uh, 50 gallon barrel, you'd put uh, 50 pound of grain in it and 50 pound of sugar. And you heat this water that you pour in it till it's about hot enough to shave with. And hit a sour, as you call it, ferment for four days, three and four. It work off. And then you dip it your water, which is beer then, off the top of your grain into your mash barrel. And you fill it up, you like about a third of having it full on beer. like you would an uh, ordinary moonshine steam. Now the steam that goes from that pot will heat that beer. And the steam that comes off the beer will travel through to the last barrel, which you would have a connection in it going into a thumping keg, which would be a dry keg. And then a connection coming out of that into your condenser put your coal or condenser would be into water. My daddy, he made whiskey. My granddaddy did too. But we ain't played no whiskey pass since 1792. And your steam that gets into that box from your thumping kegs and from all these other barrels, it would condense down when it hits the water and come out the other end is alcohol. 